good morning guys uh, this meeting is getting live streamed in the youtube uh, if you are getting dropped off you can watch in the youtube yeah so there was a question from someone who is saying uh, hi kanthi this is kanthara yeah yeah go ahead uh, yesterday you you were saying that uh, if you are creating multiple threads in the main uh, multiple threads in the main class main method mm -hmm. so parallel the run method will be called right yes uh but the uh, see but the uh, pre threads uh, it will be same uh, uh, same run method will be called right so same functionality will be called for uh, three times yeah that is what the parallel program say for example okay. if you want to do the salary processing you of one lakh people uh, yeah different that is what functionality called. means uh, so how we go for the different functionality run say what does a parallel uh, thread what is the purpose of thread enable uh, the parallel programming correct yes now whenever you are enabling a parallel programming if you are going for if uh, for example if i am writing a for loop like this okay now what and inside the for loop i am doing some here i am calling some display method okay in this display method whatever is the logic that is there that will execute for uh, how many times if i put 1 uh, lakh so can it the same logic will be executed for 1 lakh times uh, yeah for this loop uh, it will it will be same yeah process. but what is the problem here in order to run this 1 lakh record it may take time So how do you reduce the time? You can it so is this a single process or multiple processes? It's a single process. That means it's a sequential, correct? Sequential. Yes. Now what I can do instead of writing it as a sequential, can I go for a parallel execution? Yes. And if I keep if I create ten threads and then this display method, if I keep in run method, can a ten threads will execute parallelly run uh, display? Yes. Yes, yeah. parallel is done. Yeah, that means <clears throat> the purpose of the thread is to if you are doing a sequential process, you can change it. But your question is, I want to do some other process. Then you, it's a different, right? That is not a thread purpose, right? Uh, actually, see, for suppose if if I want to call the any API for three different APIs at a single time, so it will be helpful for that. No, you different API in the inside the run method, you can call those APIs, right? you can call the first api here next line second api next line third api right? but uh, every start method will price will be called right but yes, yes. Be... if it is if you a requirement is to call only one then why do you go for a thread you write in the main method itself right no no i am i am saying that uh, for the three apis at the, the simultaneous it will be called as so yes yes then you see then why are you creating only one thread you create multiple threads right so yeah. can i say now i can go to in the first thread i will call the first api thread okay thread 1 extends thread okay now inside this run method what i will do i will call the uh, whatever the api that you are asking like first api okay okay, okay and uh, now i'll create one more thread and in that call i can call in that method i can call the second api right and then you can create accordingly the threads correct is that no so you can call second api here now from the main method so earlier in the main method what i am doing i am creating a thread object multiple times for the same thread but instead of so this one to... i can create a separate thread right thread 1 t4 equal to new thread 1 then so sub separate class need to be created yeah yeah see you can create any number of threads right yeah 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 then see in the thread one class you have a run method you can write whatever the implementation calling a first api and in the different thread you can call the second api and then from the main class you can call your uh, uh, thread dynamically right now if i call like this now from this line you tell me now thread 5 t5 and here i if i say t5 and it's a thread to two okay now whenever this whenever this line executes from the main method can i say independent path of execution will be created yes and will it call the run method of thread one class yes and what it is doing it is calling the one api correct yes correct now for after that your your main method will go to the next line can i say this will also create one more independent path of execution yes 
Okay. And it will go to the thread two. In the thread two, what are you writing the code? Second Second yeah. yeah, the difference that we have seen is here I'm creating a multiple threads for the same class. But is it is anyone is uh, stopping you to create a multiple threads and you write your multiple logics in the run method? No. No, you can do, right? Yeah. Hope your question is resolved. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so in the single class, we cannot uh, create the multiple. We have to separately, we need to create a separate class and we need to yes, run yes. the thread parallel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. When you are having a run method, can you write one? Can you write run method two times? No, right? No, no cannot. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. But from the run method, you can call the different methods. And based on the different method outputs, you can write. Okay? okay. But if you want exactly entirely parallel, you can create a multiple thread. I mean, multi threads and then execute it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so are there anyone who joined newly today? Uh, Kalpa Kiran, are you part of the previous classes? Yes, sir. I was the part of the previous classes. From okay. The... okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you. So, fine. So, those who are watching YouTube, if you are uh, new to the class, so this class has started two days back. And in the first class, we looked at the course content. So, that means this is the threads workshop and we are going to look at complete threads. Okay, and and the course content would be like we'll we are going to look at all the, uh, what you call thread mechanisms like uh, object lock, class lock, executor framework, with a practical program. This is a course content that you have seen that you can see. Uh, all these things uh, we are going to discuss, which I have already taught about in the first class. Now, and the fee for this course is uh, two thousand five hundred. And the timing of the class is morning 9 30 a.m. to 10 30 a.m. And uh, the duration of this course is 2, 25 to 30 days. And the demo classes will be there till Monday or Tuesday. If you are interested, today you are going to get an email from the Ashok IT. That email will have the how to join, how to enroll for the class. Like uh, they'll be giving you, just let me show you the sample. I'm not saying that this is the exact. Uh, one but i'll just i'll just try to show you the enrollment email so like this you are going to get an email from the ashok it now that uh, email will have the previous session links and uh, you can watch it any number of times and uh, it will also have you the bank account details on which you have to do the transfer either you can do neft or you can pay through google pay once you have done take a screenshot and send that screenshot to this ashok it payments at red gmail.com and in that email, just mention your name, contact number, course code. Course code is nothing but for us. Uh, it's a, a thread. Timing is 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Attach the payment screenshot. Once you send this email, you will get a confirmation from the Ashok IT. So this email you guys are going to get uh, received today. Maybe in an uh, next one to two hours after the completion of the class, you are going to receive an email uh, on like whatever the email that you have given during the joining of this Zoom meeting, you are going to receive that email. If you are interested, you can do that uh, payment and send a, email, confirm a uh, email to the Ashok IT payment at gmail.com. Then they will verify your uh, payment. And once the verification is completed, you will get a written confirmation from them. And then you will also get a call from the Ashok IT and they will explain how to join the everyday class. And uh, as I mentioned, the recordings will be free of cost, right? So how to watch the recording? They will explain that in the call. And uh, till Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday, we'll have the demo classes. Beyond that, the demo classes will not be there and we will. Uh, the Zoom link is going to change. You don't need to worry about the Zoom link. Uh, once you enroll it, you will, given, you will be given access to the Ashok IT portal. There you have a button called join class. Whenever you click on that button, you will join the class. So what Zoom link, it doesn't matter to you. Okay. So any questions so far, anyone in the process? So whatever the programs I'm writing in the class, whatever the one note I'm using, and I have prepared a separate notes, uh, that also will be shared with you all. Let me quickly show you the notes. So this is the one note. I have prepared this notes on my own. This is not 
copied from some internet guys so i have prepared like question answer like what is a thread thread is an independent path of execution within a same program how many ways to create a thread see i have taken a screenshot and i kept it here it's like a question and answer so that easily you can answer in the uh, i mean whenever you are going for an interview easily you can answer so all this uh, document will be shared with you once you are enrolled for the class any question so far okay i take that no questions now and the the pattern that we discussed in the class is first 10 minutes would be the recap of what we have discussed in the previous class and then we'll with we'll start with a new topic and at the end i am going to explain what we are going to discuss in the tomorrow class okay now let's get into a today's class and uh, yesterday we started looking at uh, the first day we looked at what is a thread now yesterday we started looking at how to create a thread can someone tell me what is the way to create a thread by extending Ex a thread class, class thread. and yeah. implementing run. so if you do not implement run method what happens will it not be a thread if you do not overwrite the run method, will it not be a thread? No, it will be a thread. Yeah, but what what is the disadvantage of not overriding the run method? You cannot implement our own logic. Our own logic will be not implemented. Yeah, so, and whenever if you do not override it, whenever you call the start, why, why are you calling the start method? To start the execution. To call the native method, start method, native method. So what it will do? It will right. call the run method and it will create the CPU cycle. Yeah. So what it is the difference between independent path? It yeah. will create an independent path. Yeah. So what is the difference between calling a run method directly and calling a start method? If you call the run method, it will directly to call the what we overwrite it from the class. Run uh, run method will not create a thread. We call the directly run method. So if you're calling, the yeah, that means it's a general method calling in Java. But whenever you call the start method, it's creating an independent path. Whenever it's an independent path, main method can execute at the same time, your thread also can execute. That is a parallel processing, correct? Yeah. And these are the things yes, that we have seen, right? Yeah, sorry, go yes, ahead. Sir. Yes, uh, sir. So uh, creating the thread, uh, 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 there are two ways, right? Yeah. Extending thread and implementing run over interface, right? Yeah, but what is the different uh, difference of uh, means uh, the way of uh, creating thread like implementing run interface and like any thread? I did not even come to there. I will explain later. Okay, <laughs> because yesterday we have seen only extending a thread class. We haven't seen how to create a thread object by implementing a runnable interface. Once we see that, we can see the differences. Which one would be better, and which yes. one we can prefer? Okay, that will be covered in the upcoming. I mean. Like to, if possible today, if not tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, whenever I create a thread object, what is the state of a thread? A uh, new, new state. So, uh, does the new state will be there before calling a start method or after calling a start method? Before calling. Before calling start. Start. Yeah. When you call the start method, what happens? It will be in the runnable state. Pool. Yeah, and the connection pool. It will yeah. be, it will go to the connection pool. It's not a connection pool. It's a runnable pool. Connection runnable pool, pool is sorry, sorry. there in the SQL. Uh, SQL. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you call a start method, this thread is available, and it will see when when you call the start method. Can you guarantee that immediately the thread flow of execution will start? No. Uh, no one can just, guarantee because no it all depends on your operating system, right? So who is creating if inside the start method there is a start zero method it's a native method that method depends on the jvm implementation if you are operating see whenever you're creating a thread you are underlining uh, hardware in the system like if you have eight core processor or core a5 core 8 and something it will create multiple threads but if, if you are using an old one like single core processor like uh, 20 years back we used to have single core and dual core right so will which laptop will be faster core 8 or uh, core 8 or a uh, single pro single core processor which one would be faster core 8 core 8 core right eight. 
why do you prefer that because it internally in the operating system it has multiple cores in that uh, processor right so the same thing your number of whether to create a thread independent path or not it all depends on your uh, physical hardware of a computer okay now whenever you call a start method that thread will go into a runnable pool and if uh, your jvm is deciding that yes there is a free space i can start a thread then that thread will execute a run method whenever a thread is executing a run method what is the state that is called running state uh, uh, running state yeah after completion of a run method what is the state dead state dead state dead state. state so this is what we have discussed till yesterday right now today what we are going to discuss is now the my question is now so once the whenever i say t dot start it is creating a thread and it is executing a run method now after completion of a run method i don't want to create one more thread object can i do again i don't want to create like this but i want to call see if i call, if if i am calling like this and if it is calling the run method again what what am i doing here can i say i am trying to reuse a thread instead of you see whenever you are creating a object like this what happens will it occupy some memory yeah yes right so and it see whenever i create a object in java it will occupy like uh, all the global instance variables <laughs> it will occupy the memory right and then you are calling a start method it will execute a run method after completion of after completion of run method i want to call the start method again now that means i am trying to reuse a thread correct or yeah. if you call the start method twice on the same same object what happens it will illegal throw the thread. yeah illegal. illegal thread state exception does anyone know why it will throw or how it will throw how java knows that you are already completed a thread after running it will go to the dead state so that's that we are calling again that is what you are saying but how does java know internally right let's look at that now let's call the debugger java application now from line number 18 so i will call the start method so can i say it will call the internal thread class start method yes now here do you see what is this thread status it's a variable correct now let's see what kind of a variable it is instance variable by instance. default what is the value zero so that means whenever i call the start method first time what does the value this this variable will hold zero so now now currently when i am calling that start method first time zero not equal to zero is it true no no that means it will go inside it is it will it throw exception no and then they are calling the start zero can i say from start zero your independent path of execution will be created yes, yes. now let's put a break point in the run method see now let's debug further if you debug further started equal to true that means when started equal to true can i say your independent path of execution is created yes now and then see what is the variable what does this variable is holding five five that means once the thread is started in turn how to how to uh, how java is knowing the thread is started or completed internally it is holding a variable called thread status initially it is zero on the thread object see now i am using one object name and then calling this method and initially this variable is zero and i did not get any exception now when the thread is started this variable is set to 5 inside this method they are setting the thread status variable to 5 correct now now let me i don't complete it even if you complete it not a problem let's go to the main method and then start executing let's uh, execute f8 click on f8 here now now from the main method what are you doing again from this line number 21 you are calling the start method again correct mm -hmm. yes and is it a different object or same object on the same object so then what will be the thread status variable you can think is it zero again no because in the same object you are passing earlier whenever the thread status it's a global variable once you uh, once you assign a value throughout the object it will hold the same value correct yes now the thread status value is 5 why not equal to 0 is it true mm. so then what it is throwing 
illegal threat state exception. This is how Java will identify that the thread is already executing or thread has started executing, etc. Okay. Okay. So now I repeat. So whenever we are calling a start method on a same thread again, what happens? It will throw the illegal thread state exception. How does Java identify that the thread has completed execution or in progress of execution? Because whenever you're creating a thread object and calling a start method, it internally holds one variable called thread status. This thread status will be initially zero. And once the thread is started, it will be non-zero value. It can be five, 10, uh, anything. Right? I mean, when I say zero to 10, anything it can be. So it will hold a non-zero value. So on the same object, if you are calling a start method again, since in the first step, it has become a non-zero value second time, whenever you're calling, it is no longer zero because it is an instance variable at class level, right? So it will hold the value. And if it is not equal to zero, then Java uh, people are identifying that the thread has completed execution or in progress. So I should not allow again. So that is nothing but whenever you're calling a start method again on a dead thread or the call calling a start method twice, then you will get a illegal thread state exception. I hope you understand. Now, yes, sir. Yeah, with this one, can I now, can, can you tell me one, I create a thread object and I call the start method and it will execute a run method and after run method execution is completed. Now, can I reuse the thread object? And I, can I reuse the thread object and call the start method again? No. No. That means is it a, so that means if I want again one more one more time if I want to execute a run method, can I say I have to create one more object? Yes. So that means is it a drawback or not? Yeah. It's a parallel processing, but if you see if you want to execute the run method hundred times, then how many thread objects you need to create? Hundred thread objects. Hundred thread uh, objects. Can you with one thread object can you call the start method hundred times? No, no, we'll get the exception. Yeah. So that means this is a drawback of a thread. So whenever you create a new thread object and call a start method, independent path of execution is getting created. But the problem here is you cannot reuse the same, same thread object because you have to create multiple thread objects. What is the problem of creating multiple thread objects? It will, it will require a memory, correct? Whenever you create an object, uh, the object will occupy some memory unnecessarily, right? So now yes. what is the drawback of a thread? A, thread, a normal way of creation of a thread cannot be reused. That means once you call a start method on a thread, you cannot reuse the thread. So that is a drawback of a thread. In order to overcome this drawback, there is a topic called, or there is a concept called thread pool. So the thread pool has been introduced to overcome this the drawback of a thread, which we are going to discuss later point of time. But I just told you that what happens if you call the start method again, and what is the drawback of a thread? Okay, now this first way of uh, creation of a thread object by extending a thread class, we just have seen. Now let's look at a creating a thread object by implementing a thread class. Thread example by IMPL. So, so th or I'll let us uh, change the name. Thread by runnable. Okay, now how to see the second way of creating a thread object is by implementing runnable interface. By implementing runnable interface. Whenever you are implementing an runnable interface, runnable interface has one abstract method. Look at here. See, yes. even if you look at the thread class, the thread class internally implementing a runnable interface. Yes. See, thread class internally implementing a runnable interface. And uh, sorry, let's go to thread class. Thread class implementing a runnable, right? Runnable is having one abstract method called run. Now, whenever you are implementing a interface and you are not overriding a abstract method, then what the child class will become? Abstract. Abstract. Uh, well, there are two ways. One way is you can make, you have to Im implement the method or you have to make the child class abstract, correct? Yeah. I'm overriding a run method, right? Now. <coughs> okay. 
now so now if i want to create a thread what method i need to call start, start, start method. method where that start method is present in the thread class in the thread class and it's a instance method correct yes now that means in order to call a method instance method present in a class what should i do create an object create a object of that class and call it correct so that yes. means can i say now i need to create thread class thread t equal to new thread i need to create a thread class object and then i call i need to call the start method but now here what are you doing you are creating a uh, thread by implementing a enable interface now whenever you are implementing an enable interface go to your thread class and see how what are all the different constructors you have now if you look at uh, this constructor what this constructor is accepting runnable runnable means it's a interface right interface, interface right. object or reference it is accepting can you create a object to a interface no 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 then how okay. can i call this constructor we can pass its implemented class yeah that means i need to create a class implement the interface override the abstract method and create a object of that class and pass it here correct yes now in our example what is the class that is implementing a runnable interface now can i call like this thread by runnable tr equal to new thread by runnable that means this is a class thread by runnable which is implementing runnable interface and i have created a object now can this object i i can pass this to the thread class yes and then now can i say that now i have created a thread class object yeah. yes now what is the purpose i created a thread class object because in order to create a thread i need to call the start method start method present in thread class that is the purpose correct that means whenever you are implementing a runnable interface how to create a thread object first you create a object and pass it here now can can i club these two lines and write like this thread t equal to new thread of can i can i directly create new thread by runnable yes what's the difference between that and this one Earlier we are passing the argument. Now we are passing the object. Yes, sir. Here also both are same, right? Here, here also TR is nothing but an object. Under friends, under friends. This that is the object. Yeah. Yes. Object. That is right. So here, whenever you are creating like this, what is happening from the memory perspective? What is happening is, yeah. Uh, let's go to this one note. Let's take. Okay, now whenever I create a object like this, line number 14, then can I say in the memory, it will occupy the memory. In it assume that this is a heap area. Okay. And then it will occupy the memory. And this is referenced by a variable called TR. Correct. Now, what is this one? Whenever you're creating object, you are creating an object. Okay, and passing it. Now that means mm -hmm. it is creating an object like this. But is this object is referenced by anyone, any variable? No. That means no. this is called anonymous object. Now, after come after this uh, main uh, after this line of execution is completed, and this object will be eligible for garbage that's collection. Correct. Yeah. So that's the difference of these two lines. Okay. Now, whenever I call the start method again, it will call the run method. Let us see quickly. Debugger Java application. See, thread status is not equal to zero. See, is it, uh, it's calling. Now let's put a breakpoint. I have completed executing. Let me put a sys out here. Debugger. 
Labor Gas Java application. So let's remove this breakpoint. See, currently main method is in line number 19. And then uh, thread zero is executing parallelly, right? So it is going, I mean, it will come back to the my class run method, right? Yeah. So this is how to create a thread object whenever you are implementing a runnable interface. Okay. Now the question is, which one would be better or which one would be one? Now, let's write here, extends thread implements runnable. Okay, now whenever you are extending a thread class, can you extend multiple classes at a time? After extends keyword, can I write T1 class comma T2? No. No, that no. means here, for example, if you have... Yeah, so whenever I'm extending a thread class, can I extend one more class? No. That means you cannot do multiple inheritance, correct? Yes. Multiple inheritance is not possible. But if I am implementing an interface, can I implement uh, can I implement multiple interfaces at a time? Yes, we can. R1 comma R2. That means multiple in inheritance is possible, correct? Okay, this is first difference. Okay. Now the second one. Now, whenever you are creating a uh, thread object, what exactly uh, you are, I mean, see, if you are creating a thread object, can I say uh, entire memory for the thread uh, will be allocated? And what exactly, which one is the one which is responsible to create a thread start method, correct? Which is responsible yes. to create a start uh, thread start method? So if you are able to call the start method, that should be fine, correct? No. Yes. Now, the, what I meant by that is whenever you create extending a thread class, so it, all the variables, like there are some variables for this class. So the object becomes heavyweight. Like whenever you are creating an object using a thread class, object becomes heavyweight. Okay, but whenever you are implementing a runnable interface, what method you are writing? Or I mean, you are overriding run method for sure, correct? And whenever you are extending a thread class, if you if you are not overriding run method, what is the use of creating a thread? It's no use, correct? But whenever you are implementing a runnable interface, for sure you can you say that you need to override it? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So the object when from when by implementing a runnable interface object becomes lightweight okay please repeat sir so sorry that object weight is heavy and light please repeat sir. so whenever you are extending a thread class so you are creating an object, see, you are creating a child object. Child object means you are calling a parent class constructor too. That means it will occupy the memory for all the child class variables, parent class variables, everything, correct? Yes, so that, that's the reason the object becomes heavyweight. That means it occupies more memory. But okay. whenever you are creating a, uh, using a runnable interface, you are creating an anonymous object and immediately it can be garbage collected, right? And you're just overriding a run, you need to override a run method for sure. But whenever you are extending a thread class, you may, for, if you are forgetting to override a run method, it will not create any compilation issue, but the thread itself is not useful, right? And whenever you are implementing a runnable interface, you don't need to uh, worry about, uh, I mean, compared to the extending a thread class, runnable interface implementation will take less memory, right? And immediately that anonymous object that you are passing can be garbage collected. So that's the reason we can say that object becomes lightweight whenever you are implementing a runnable interface. Now, in the projects and uh, whenever you are uh, uh, implementing a runnable interface, you the one more thing is, if you are, uh, there is a one more, another way of creating a thread object by implementing a callable interface. Now, if you are extending a thread class and you are overriding, does the run method returns anything, guys? 
So if you want to return something from the thread, can you do here? If you are using a thread yeah. or runnable interface, can you return something from the run method? We cannot. No. We cannot because the run method signature says void. Can you change the return type in the overriding? We cannot. In the, in, in the overriding concept, you can change a return type, correct? That yes, is called sir. covariant return type. That means if my parent class return type, for example, uh, now let's create quickly. So this is a core Java topic, but since uh, some of you guys may not know, I'll explain quickly. So let me call, create a class called A. And inside that I have a public A, public object M1. I have one method, okay? Return object, new object, okay? Now, what I will do, I will create a class B. I will say B extends A. Can I override the M1 method, uh, that method? Yes, we can. Yeah. Whenever I'm overriding the method, ideally the return type. Now the question is, whenever I'm overriding, can I modify a return type? Now, can I keep string here? Yes. Yes, we now, can. Uh, is it allowed? Yes, it is allowed. Yeah, what type yeah. of this uh, concept is called as? Widening custom. No, it is called covariant return type. It's yeah. a core Java topic. It is called covariant return type. So whenever you are overriding, so the return type you are mentioning, what I have mentioned here, string, uh, the return type of M1 method in the child class, the return type of M1 method is string. This string should be subclass of this one then only that is possible okay mm -hmm. the return the written type of overridden method in the child class should be subclass of overridden method in the parent class now can i call can now let's re, uh, let's put written written object okay now can yes. i can i put here string and see no no okay i'm getting an exception right here in the b class i'm getting an exception why it is so always your uh, child class method return type should be subclass of parent class return type this okay. this concept is called as covariant return type okay whenever you are doing a overriding you can modify a return type but this is written this is uh, related to the what you call always objects right but if i keep if my a in my a class if i keep void is void a object what is void it is a keyword correct if it is a object if if for example the return type of m1 method is void means what is it an object it's a keyword no. void means no. nothing keyword. it is empty now in my return in my child class can i uh, can i modify the return type no because no. there is no other way it's a, it is not a class at all correct you cannot have no. an object that means now when it comes to your run method uh, whenever you are overriding a run method, the return type of a run method is void. Generally, in the overriding principle, we can modify a return type. But if my parent class return type is void, can I modify it? No. No. That means the uh, see whenever I want I am writing a run method, I cannot return or whenever I am using a uh, runnable interface, I cannot implement or I cannot uh, return something from the thread. If you want to return something from a thread, then you need to go for a callable interface. If you are implementing a callable interface, it has one abstract method called call and you can return something from the method. So that which we are going to discuss later, but uh, I just told you the drawback of a run method, uh, runnable interface. See, this is these are the different, but there are some drawbacks of runnable also. What is the drawback? You are doing some multi-threading. You are executing run method. From the run method, you want to return something. Can you do that? No. But you can do that using a callable interface. That is the reason why to go for a callable interface, which we are going to discuss with a program later point of time. But since we are talking about the differentiations and problems, I told you that. Any questions so far? Sir, that uh, thread actually that, uh, see, we are creating a thread in two ways, action in 30 class and runnable interface. In that uh, runnable interface point of view, how the thread came, sir, actually, that 
the out. same you are calling a start method start method is responsible to create a thread right yes, where sir. is the start method is present in third class so what is that method is it an instance method or a static method Instance. So, how to call an instance method present in a class? Object, sir. Which object? Thread object. Now, since it is present in thread class, you need to create a thread object. So, that's the reason I am creating a thread object. Okay. Based on calling that one, we are taking that to thread class. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, implement a runner interface. Uh, uh, it is thread or a, a, it is a task? No, it is not a task. Uh, you, uh, some it is not a task. I mean, that uh, you can see, I think you have seen the task word in some of the blocks and all, correct? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, because of what one of our uh, uh, interview we have, we have discussed and they, they, can, they are not agree uh, implementing not interface, interface, uh, interface is, is a one kind of uh, like a, uh, uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so implementing Donald interface, he's not, not a, agree. It is, he told it, it is a task, so the task we are given to the uh, uh, different, different thread. No, no, no. So one way, uh, second way of creating a thread is by implementing a runnable interface. The interviewer yeah, so, might not be aware. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and, uh, and uh, so I, I explained so uh, the uh, creating the uh, the uh, thread, uh, there are two ways extend the implement uh, uh, runnable interface and he explained so I can be able to uh, create that thread in the um, like uh, uh, five years like he told implement uh, implement a runnable interface and extend thread and also executor services and uh, and uh, yes. run it. Yeah, executor so, service is also there. That is different. That is what thread pool comes into picture, which we are going to see later. But see, he, first, see, first way is thread, okay? By yeah. extending thread class. Extends thread class, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, second way is uh, implements runnable, okay? Third way is implements callable. Yeah. Okay? And fourth way is if we have the executor framework. In the executors, yeah. there are uh, new fixed thread pool, new cached thread pool. By calling these methods, also it will create a thread. Okay. Now there are another way is uh, fork join pool. Yeah. Fork join pool. These are all ways, the ways to create a thread only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What was your question? So, so my question is uh, uh, because of the even I, I see the blocks. Uh, implementing runnable interface is not the way of creating the thread. It no, is one of the... no. Because... implementing runnable interface is also one of the way of creating a thread because the reason, see here, which method, which uh, which line of code is creating exactly a thread? Calling a start method, correct? Now, yeah, yeah. whenever I'm extending a start method also, without start method, am I getting a thread? No. No. But here also, even if I'm implementing a runnable interface, after calling a start method only, I am getting a thread kind of a behavior, correct? Yeah. Yeah, there is another way of creating a thread. Okay. Whatever the block that you have studied, it might be wrong. Okay. Okay. See, that is the reason. See, here, when, see, in order to call a start, then what do you need? You need a thread object, correct? Yes. Yeah. So now, if you look at here in the thread class, there are different constructors. Look at here. So you are calling a constructor means, can I say, you are creating an object? Whenever you're creating an object, thread object, that means you're creating a thread only, right? Yeah. Yeah. So whatever the block that you have studied, it might be wrong. The better way to uh, study is, see, look at here. Allocates a new object. This constructor has the same effect as link deploy and thread group. Okay. The object was, uh, method is invoked when the thread is started. Look at here. See, whatever I have shown you here, is it a Java documentation or is it written by me? It's in Java documentation. That means, is it a source of truth? Source code of, of the summary. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a truth, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so look at here. The target, the object whose method is invoked when the thread is started. That means, are you starting a thread or not? Yeah. Yo, see, name of the thread, name of the new thread. So, it's a thread creation only. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, let's go to uh, one more topic. Now, how to set a name to a thread? Now, whenever I run this program, whenever I run this program, so do you see in the thread brackets, there is, there is a name called main. Did I write any code for that? 
No. Now automatically the compiler is setting the main method as a main thread, correct? Yes. Now, if I run normally, what is the name of the thread is coming? Let's see. Now, if I execute t dot start means can I say it will create a thread? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is the thread name you are getting? Thread zero. Thread zero. Correct. So how that thread zero is coming? Let us look at here. Now, whenever you're calling this start method, can I say your thread class start method will be invoked? Yeah. Now, or 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 before that, whenever you're creating a thread object, let's see here. Sorry. Yeah. Now from this one line, line number 18, can I say I'm calling a constructor of my class? Yeah. And then from here it will go to the thread class constructor, correct? With correct. no arguments. Right. Now here internally they are calling this one, two, three, four parameters they are passing. This followed by four parameters. What does it mean? What is the method there? Is, are they calling a method or what are they calling? Constructor. So this means this refers to always a constructor. They are calling another constructor, passing the first two parameters as null. And what is the third parameter? Thread. The thread, thread hyphen. Happen. And then the next thread number. What is this next thread number? It's a method. What yes. is this method is returning? See, there is a thread, thread. In, in it number. It's zero. Yes. Okay. Now, every time you create a thread, what the number will become? Plus one, right? Plus one. Now, if you look at here, first time whenever you're calling a thread, what is the number of that? Zero, right? Zero. So that means, sorry, uh, let's go to this thread class. So from this one, they are calling a constructor. This constructor means they will go to the four. See, first one is null. Second one is null. What is the name? Third one is name. name, name. Mean, this is a thread name. When How they are identifying? They have hard coded the name called. Sorry. Yeah. If you go to the thread uh, default constructor. See, they are passing thread iPhone. That means they hard coded this name. And the if first Next. time you are calling. First thread means zero. Next time, yes. one. one. Next time, two. Something like two. that. Correct? Yes. Now. yes. Sir, uh, sir, here from the, the next thread number. So why... Next thread number is a method, right? Yeah. So in why he's not counting the uh, main thread? Because main uh, main is also on. on he, uh, he, see, he, uh, for main thread, are you creating a thread object here? Anything? No, no. In the main. See here, uh, why it is not counting? Because see here. From this line of code only, you are creating a thread object, correct? Yeah. yeah. But uh, can you create a, what is the main method? Is it a static method or not? Starting method, yes. Static. So in order to call a static method, do you need an object? No, no. reference so, okay. so that means in, in the compiler itself, it is calling. And then they are setting the name there itself. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so now, uh, whenever you call this one, so now first thread, you will get a, uh, thread zero. Now, second thread, you will get thread, thread. one. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Likewise, you are getting a name. Now, if I want to set a name separately, if I want to set my name as Karthik, thread name as Karthik or something, how can I do? Now, in the thread class, there are some constructors. Let's look at here. Do you see one constructor name, one constructor here, thread string name? By yes. calling this constructor, you can set a name to a thread. Okay. So that means whenever you're creating a thread object, what you need to pass? You need to pass some string. This is the way to create a thread. So let's create here. Now here I'm creating a child object. Child object means I need to have one single argument constructor, correct? Yeah. Yeah. String. str. And then this string I need to call, pass it to a super, super. correct? Yeah. Super str. That means now it will call now, for example, if I put a thread name as Karthik, what is the thread name? It will be show Karthik. It will not show the thread zero because you are providing your own method, right? Now let yeah. me put Karthik, uh, Ashok. Okay, now let's run the program and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Debug as Java application. See, what is the thread name? Karthik. Likewise, whenever the main thread is executing, the Java from the compiler, 
or from uh, Java runtime environment will call the main method, right? Whenever they are doing, they are putting the name as main, okay? Now here, if you look at here, now earlier it is showing thread zero, but now the Karthik is coming. Now, if I execute again, Ashok will come, correct? So this yeah. is how, this is one of the way to create a name to a thread. There is another way that by calling a set name method, we can create it, but we are on top of time. So we are going to see that tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow is no class and the next class will be on Monday. Saturday and Sunday will be holiday generally. And the next yeah. class would be on 26th February, Monday. Sure, sure. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? So far, uh, whatever you have learned, uh, do you understand that? Yes, sir. sir we are writing that uh, another fork, like uh, what is that one, sir? Ways of creating thread. Huh? That is fork join pool. Yes, that is also another one. It's also a thread pool, which is different from the executor framework. We will learn this now later. Yes, in the interview questions, we will learn that. There the folk join pool also will be there, part of the cu curriculum. Okay. So guys, uh, are you able to understand the threads? Whatever you have shown, I mean, there is a third class. So were you able to understand and follow my uh, lecture? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now the entire uh, remaining entire uh, topics will be the same way, guys. I explain with a practical program, and uh, it will be a more of an interactive session. Okay. Now and today you are going to get an email from the Ashok IT. That email will contain how to enroll for the course. If you are interested, you can uh, do that. Follow the steps, and you can enroll for the course. Okay. Uh, Monday will be uh, maybe the last or uh, last demo class. You can join Monday as well and you can take a decision. Yes. Okay. And yes. Uh, yes. yesterday, some of you have asked about the collection, uh, this one. So have you got received, have you guys received that? Uh, yes, sir. I, I got it. And uh, can you please help me with the course code of collections? Uh, collections, just give, uh, it is 28 collections, you can say. 28 Java collections. 28 Java collection. And in bracket, you can write uh, Karthik, sir, uh, 8 a.m. batch. Uh, okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And uh, there was some other person who asked about those. Have you got that information too? Yeah, yeah I got the call from you. Yeah. And did they provide you the, uh, what you call? Yeah, yeah. They gave the information. Yeah. Okay. If you just go through it, if you are interested, you can enroll. And uh, once you enroll it, you might you will be added to 28 Java Collections Batch WhatsApp group. And uh, let me know. I can share. Once you enroll for this course, I will share the entire code, notes, whatever we have written so far. Okay. So, uh, for the, uh, so if, if you enroll now, so yeah. okay, will we will we, 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 we eligible to join the for next live session? Yeah, you can. You can join, but uh, you will not be getting a recording at that time. Yeah, yeah, right, because uh, no interaction we enroll with recording. Right? That's why. Yeah, yeah, I understand you were. You wanted to more of a live session rather than a listening to a recording, correct? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, correct. Uh, yeah. So my next batch may join after completion of the essay. So it takes another two months. If you are waiting for that, it's good. But in within the two months, if you are able to listen to the recordings and if you do not have a question, you don't need to join. But we'll be giving you the uh, opportunity to join. But at that time, you don't get the recordings. These recordings also will be there. And there will not be changing in any lecture. Like I may use the words differently, correct? English. But the yeah. con concept that I'm explaining the way will be the same. Okay. Okay. Sir, one minute. Yeah, go ahead. So, after this class, so can we expect the recording request? The same day or? Yeah, uh, by the end of today, it will take at least uh, 24 hours, I think. Uh, by end of uh, the day, so my class is in the morning, right? I can say by 8 yeah. p.m. in the evening, I think they will upload the recordings. So, it's, uh, are you sure that? Compulsory, they will upload the 
yeah within one day they will upload yes yeah yeah if there is a problem you can let the admin know they will resolve it asap so okay, we okay. can so we can understand ds uh, without uh, learning this collection and like uh, if it is left uh, you can i mean uh, in the dsa we talk about uh, sorting searching right those you can understand but in the dsa we'll learn about a graph for graph you need to know what is a tree and in the dsa we have uh, so many questions like mirror image of a tree uh, binary search tree and uh, tree uh, i mean uh, level order traversal vertical order traversal left view of a tree right view of a tree in order to learn that you need to know the tree so that will be taught in the collections i'll teach in the data structures but uh, uh, see collections i will uh, think that you guys do not know anything correct those who are joining for a collection from scratch so when you are joining for data structures the prerequisite is you know some collections also right okay okay yeah so you still you can understand uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it would be good and like, i prefer uh, going by collections and then dsa would be fine and by the time for example now if you uh, if you think that you enroll for uh, uh, for collections now in order to go through all these 35 sessions you need some time and yes, now the yes. question comes will i be talking about the tree within this 35 days no it it takes some time for completing first i will start with a time complexity space complexity searching all the sorting algorithms like bubble sort insertion sort selection sort quick sort merge sort heap sort and uh, after that um, uh, binary search uh, linear search so by this time yeah mm -hmm. in the meantime you can go through all this recording all this collection yeah mm -hmm. and i at the same time i will also let you know that when i am going to discuss trees like maybe a uh, two three days ahead of the time because those who are part of collections also if you are not practicing uh, once a week or something uh, you will forget right you need to brush yes. up your tree, tree skills again so as part of that even my uh, for collection batch students also i will explain i will tell them that if uh, maybe two days after two days we are going to start with the threads sorry start collection. with three, uh, three uh, topics three. you have to please uh, brush up your skills on brush the trees up. yeah so you have to, i mean if you are enrolling you have a time to recap it's up to you okay Any more questions, anyone? So when your uh, this new features batch will start, it will take time. Uh, maybe after threads is completed, Achoo. I may start. Yeah, okay. Java eight, nine, eleven. You mean, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, after threads is completed, I may start. Okay. Thanks. But in the recently, I completed. If you want, you can enroll for that. It's up to you. Okay. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you all. Thanks for joining. Have a nice day. See you on Monday.